Hello students, in today's lecture we will see what are some of the applications of Internet of Things. So before we discuss about what are the different applications of Internet of Things, let us first understand what is the ultimate goal of Internet of Things, which is commonly also known as IoT. So the ultimate goal of Internet of Things is to automate human life. What does automate human life mean? That sitting on your chair, if you can see what is there in your refrigerator, or sitting in your chair, if you can see who is standing outside your door. So that is actually an example of automating human life. Now, how far this application should be applicable, uh, I mean, you, you should be able to do this. So this can be done anytime making use of any device which has IoT capability and it can be done through anywhere. So the ultimate goal of IoT is to provide connectivity of internet on any device at any time and from anywhere. And for providing that connectivity, we have already discussed what we use, sensors, RFIDs and actuators. Now, we will stress upon the three different dimensions of IoT, that is connecting upon from any place, connecting anything and connecting at any time. Now who can connect through IoT? A person can connect to another person, a device can connect to another device, a person can connect to another device and a device can also connect to a person. Now device are also termed as things. And that is what is shown in the slide, that you can have human to human interaction, things to things interaction, human to things interaction and things to human interaction. Now when you can have this interaction at any time in the day, that is 24 cross 7, 365 days in a year. Any time you can have these interaction if you have a IoT device. And from where you can have? From any place. So these are the three different dimensions of the goal of IoT, that it can provide connectivity of internet to any device at any time from any place. So with this goal in mind, the IoT applications were, the various IoT applications were developed. Now let us first understand what exactly the word application means. In the domain of information technology, an application is a set of software programs that are devised to perform certain tasks or activities which will help people in achieving certain goal. Now, when do we call an application an IoT application? If such set of software programs are designed in such a way that they can run on an IoT device, then it is termed as a IoT application. Now you may wonder that what is the difference if the software programs which are running on a on your computer or on your laptop and if it runs on a IoT device. Now the difference comes from the fact that your laptop or your computer or, or even if you have a smartphone today, those have highly capable CPUs which are processing units. Whereas if we talk about sensor devices or embedded devices, the examples of IP cameras or embedded devices on you know, your uh, microwave or your refrigerators, those are computationally less capable. They cannot run heavyweight programs. The kind of programs which you see in your laptops, for example, when you are playing a game, it requires several set of programs to perform a single task. For example, if I'm just moving the cursor around my system, that also requires a program. So if the programs, if such set of programs are designed in such a way that they can run on devices which are not computationally very powerful and also have very limited memory, then such applications are termed as IoT applications. 
you might have come across various IoT devices which are very popularly used nowadays. For example, smart meters at your home or Google or if you are using an Alexa or Google Home. So these are certain examples of IoT devices which also have lot of IoT applications. Now we will talk about certain popular IoT applications but this is a very limited of the vast scope of IoT applications which are possible. Now certain popular examples of IoT applications are building and home automation, IoT in manufacturing, IoT in waste management, IoT in medical and healthcare system, IoT can even be used in agriculture and livestock management, environmental monitoring. You think of it and you can use IoT. If you have a sensor or an embedded device and if you can connect it to some device, animal or human, it can be connected to internet and you will have a IoT application. So you can th you imagine anything and you can have that thing in your IoT ecosystem. Even your you know box of chocolate, your box of you can just implant a small sensor which tells you about has anyone opened your box of chocolate and then you have an IoT application. So you can think of anything and you have an IoT application but we will talk about a few select IoT applications which are very important. For example, IoT in case of agriculture. How can a farmer make use of IoT? There are several different applications which a farmer can apply on his farming field and make use of IoT to benefit and also increase the production of his farm. How can we do that? So if you see this diagram, you can see a drone. I hope all of you must have be aware of what a drone is. A drone can have cameras, a drone can also have devices, you know, suspenders which can spread pesticides all over the field or they can have IP cameras. We can just observe the field and see if uh, there are weeding or any unwanted activity in the field. All those things can be observed making use of a drone. Now this data which is collected by the drone that has to be processed somewhere, that has to be analyzed so that you can make a decision or a program or an application can make a decision that whether any unwanted activity is happening in the field or whether the amount of pesticides which were spread are enough or more pesticides need to be spread. So for all these we require a database, a sort of a bigger computer or a, which we also call a server which can store all this data which you can see at the top. Now, here you can see a gentleman who is holding some sort of an iPad. He can observe all these data which is collected through the drones or through a sensing device which looks like a tower over here, over this place of the slide. He can observe this in his iPad. Now this gentleman though you can see that he is standing close to the field. But even if he is away from the town, he can still have an observation about all these act, all these data collected and any activity which is going around his farm through a far distance place as well. So this is how IoT can be used in case of agriculture. Now as I said that you can connect an IoT sensor device to anyone, a person or an animal as well. So even our holy cow can be part of an IoT network. So IoT can be used for livestock management. Just imagine you have a connected cow, a cow connected to internet. Is it possible? Yes. Possible? Is it happening right now? Yes. This application is very much in use. How? Sensors are implanted in the ears of cattle or any livestock, cow, sheep. So, these sensors collect information about whether your cattle is 
in your farmhouse or it is gazing far away. And on an average, a cow can generate around 200 megabytes of information per year. Just imagine how much information is collected. So this information has to be stored somewhere. Earlier this was not possible because there was no IoT. But now since we have IoT, all devices are connected to internet. So through internet, this data can be collected and stored in large computing systems which are also known as servers. Similarly, IoT can also be used in waste management. So you can see around that if you walk through your town or maybe if you're living in a city, you will see there are various garbage boxes placed around where people can dump their garbage. Sometimes you also observe that the garbage is flowing out of the box and sometimes it spreads around the road. Now, what can we do about it? Just imagine if we had a sensor on the garbage box which could tell you that the level of garbage in the box is almost up to the brim, that the garbage box is almost full. Then, the, and if this information could be passed to the municipality, they could send a garbage truck and collect it. But since if we do not have such a system, there is high possibility or you may have observed it also that garbage is flowing out of the garbage box. If we have a IoT system wherein each box has a sensor and those sensors are connected to gateways which in turn connect them to computing platforms where you can observe the data about the level of garbage in various boxes around the various locations in the city and can make an assessment at which locations the garbage is flowing out and send your uh, and the municipality can send the truck to collect those garbage so see now iot can also be used in waste management we'll see another application of iot wherein iot can be used for industry now if you happen to visit a factory you will see that there are a lot of machines in the factory some of the machines also require oiling maintenance and regular checkups if you have a cycle, uh, then you might have also observed that you need to pump in air in your cycle tire. That's the kind of maintenance which you do for your tire. Now, if there is a big factory or if you have a scooter, then you might have observed that in the scooter you need to fill petrol. You also need to perform some regular servicing. Now, just imagine you have a big factory. How many machines are there? How many machines like your engine in a scooter will be there? And each of these machines require some sort of monitoring and maintenance. Is it possible for one human being to do so? No. You might argue that in a factory, so many people are working, they can make an observation and report about maintenance activity. But since it is said that there is always scope for human error, but machines, do they make error? Their error depends upon how we program them. So in a factory setting where you have large number of systems, large number of equipments, large number of engines like, your, like the one you have in your car or scooter, not exactly an engine, but some sort of device, you know, equipments which requires maintenance. So this can be automated or you can actually make a prediction when a particular equipment will require maintenance or when a particular equipment may fail. How we can make that observation? By connecting sensors with them, to them. So if you, there are different types of sensors. Some sensors will observe temperature, some sensors can observe movement, some sensors also observe fluctuations. So based on the type of device, you can implant a appropriate sensor, make observation and based on data collected over a week or a month or even a year, you can make an analysis that when a device or an equipment will require maintenance or change. So in a large factory setting, if all this process is automated, just imagine how much of human labor is saved, how much of human time is saved. So that's the power of IoT. So you can make use of, you can collect data, you can store it somewhere now, 
you can visualize the data, you can make some sort of analysis and you can make predictions. Now some of the manufacturers who have been using IoT since long, they have also made this observation that when they were not using IoT and now when they are using IoT for manufacturing, they have observed a 76 percent benefit, 76 percent of the users observed a benefit after using IoT. Similarly, 66 percent observed that there is benefit of customer feedback. They get better customer feedback. They are able to capture customer feedback in a better way by making, by including IoT in their process. Now, we discussed a lot of examples for IoT in home. Now, let us see the, how this application is connected. So, in your home, you have different, you know, fan, bulb, TV, all these devices through appropriate sensors can be connected to a gateway. And then through an appropriate network, internet network, you can connect to all these devices through your smartphone. And see what you have? An automated home network. Through your smartphone, you can operate your light, fan, TV, refrigerator, washing machine, and you have an automated home environment. So, in this lecture, what we saw is that there are various domains in which IoT can be applicable, and IoT also gives benefit to the users. We discussed about what is the ultimate goal of IoT. The ultimate goal of IoT is automation, is to provide a ease to human life by automation. We discussed about various popular applications of IoT. We also understood what is an application and when we can call an application an IoT application. I hope students that this lecture will generate some interest among you in the field of Internet of Things. Thank you students. మొదటి ప్రశ్న పంటలకు కనీస మద్దతు ధరను ఎవరు నిర్ణయిస్తారు మీ ఆప్షన్స్ ఏ ఆర్థిక వ్యవహారాల క్యాబినెట్ కమిటీ ఆప్షన్ బి భారత పార్లమెంటు ఆప్షన్ సి వ్యవసాయ ఖర్చులు మరియు